Uh, is my slide visible? Yes, Hello? yes, ma'am. Oh. Uh, I'll uh, just present this slide. So we will discuss about the enteric nervous system in brief. Okay, I'll uh, give you in very much brief. Okay. So, what is this enteric nervous system? So, enteric nervous system, it is the portion or a part of the autonomic nervous system. We can consider it as a part of the autonomic nervous system or completely as a com separate entity. Okay. So, uh, because this enteric nervous system, just like other nervous system, it is having the sensory neurons, motor neurons, uh, then interneurons, okay, just like the other portion of the nervous system. So it can be grouped separately or it can also be grouped under the autonomic nervous system. And when we talk of enteric nervous system, we are concerned. We are concerned about the nervous system which is located in the digestive system, which are Mm, completely, its location is completely in and along the digestive system. Uh, that means the digestive system starts from the mouth and ends at the uh, anus. Okay, and the nervous system which are controlling the activities of the and of the mm, digestive system. Okay, so that is. Uh, enteric nervous system but here the point is the enteric nervous system cannot work alone cannot work alone means it needs its integration it needs its integration in its function with the central nervous system and the uh, other uh, somatic nervous system the central nervous system or the autonomic nervous system Okay, so the, this as per the location, the enteric nervous system is located within the wall of the digestive tract, uh, digestive tract, and it starts from the esophagus to the anus. Okay, so this is located along the wall of the digestive tract, and it is having two complexes, uh, two uh, plexuses. That means the uh, they are one is a myenteric plexus and another is a submucosal plexus. Plexus means here is the group of the nerves which are controlling certain specific function and their location is specific. Okay, so group of the nerves which are in the myenteric plexus, they will be all associated with one kind of function and another group of the nerves in the enteric nervous system, they will be concerned for another uh, location as well as another set of functions in the, uh, in the digestive tract, okay? So, this one is myenteric plexus and a submucosal plexus. Okay, there are other synonyms are also there. You can go with the synonyms also. But here I'm talking about the myenteric plexus and the submucosal plexus. Okay, for easy remembrance. That is, myenteric plexus is uh, associated, okay, it is associated with the uh, motility control of the digestive tract. Okay, and it is located between the outer longitudinal and inner circular muscle. So in these diagrams, schematic diagram, we are showing different layers of the digestive tract. Okay, from outside to inside. Okay, the outer layer of the muscle of the digestive tract then outermost, okay, then the middle one and then the inner one. Outermost, the middle one and the inner one, 
and then next to the inner wall is the mucosal layer. These layers are the muscular layer and this is the mucosal layer. Okay, so the outer one, okay, the uh, who are those outer one, that means this outer one huh, and the next outer uh, layer, okay, the middle one and then the the innermost layer. Okay, so who are these? Where are these mantle plexuses located? So it is located between the outer longitudinal and inner circular muscle. That means the outermost one and the middle one. The middle one is that is the the inner one. The outermost one and this is the inner one. Okay, that means this is the what. Uh, Outer longitudinal muscle, outer longitudinal muscle means this muscle will be running along the length of the digestive tract. That means it will be running from the uh, mouth to the anus. That means in the lengthwise. And the inner circular, inner circular means just next to that outermost one, that the middle one. If we see as for the layers, there are three layers you can see here. But the muscle wise, this is the outer longitudinal and the next layer, the middle layer is the inner circular. Okay, that means inner circular means this muscle will be running in the circle facet like this. Okay, the muscle, okay, they are, their length, the muscle fibers are in this direction like this. Circular, circular, circular. All, all the, yes. Wait, huh? Uh. I think it's okay now to 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 have join. Okay. Uh, okay. So we were talking about these different layers. The outermost layer, way which you are able to see in different layers. This is the outer longitudinal muscle, the middle, the next one, next layer, it is the inner circular muscular layer, muscle layer, and the next one, okay, the inner one, this is the uh, submucosal layer, the, okay, submucosal layer means this is the mucosa and below is the submucosa. Okay, so they, here you are able to see three different layers here and the mucosal layer. The outermost one is the outer longitudinal layer. The next one, it is the inner circular muscular layer. And the next one, okay, the third one, it is the submucosal layer. Submucosal layer means this mucosa is there and the, this is the basement membrane. And below this submucosa is the Sorry, below the mucosa, mucosal layer is the submucosal layer. Okay, so what these myenteric plexus do is that it controls the motility of the my, uh, digestive tract and it is located between the outer longitudinal and the inner circular muscle. The outer, outer longitudinal muscular layer and the inner longitudinal mus uh, sorry outer uh, longitudinal and uh, inner circular okay so this is the group of the nerves which are located in between two uh, in between these two muscular layers of the digestive tract and what it is going to do what these nerves are going to do what are these groups of nerves going to do they are going to control the motility of the digestive tract okay and another is a submucosal plexus the submucosal plexus these group of the nerves set of nerves they are located in the 
submucosal layer and it is going to sense that the environment or inside the digestive tract say whether some hot substances are present here or some coarse substances are present here or some uh, saline substances are present or uh, some uh, like uh, what and any kind of the sensations okay so they are all going to be sensed by the nerves located in the submucosal layer that is the submucosal uh, plexus okay uh, another alternate uh, alternative name is some uh, alternative name for submucosal plexus is the Arsbut um, plexus okay so that also you can remember but it is easier to remember that is submucosal plexus that means located in the mucosa submucosal layer okay so this plexus senses the lumen environment it will regulate the ci tract blood flow and epithelial cell function then they, uh, it is located in the submucosa that is between the inner circular and the luminal mucosa that means this is the mucosal surface towards the lumen of the GI tract okay and this is the inner circular layer in between these is the submucosal space and the submucosal plexus is located in the submucosal layer okay in the submucosa okay so what are what is this enteric nervous system this enteric nervous system it consists as many neurons as the entire spinal cord okay and sometimes it is referred to as a mini brain that means it will be having both the sensory neurons the motor neurons and the interneurons okay so it is containing all the elements of the nervous system including the sensory neurons the motor neurons and the uh, interneurons okay that means same like uh, hello ma'am some students are not able to join oh why are they so late Mm -hmm. uh, let them try to join again. I'm not getting the request. Okay. Have they come? Have they come? Hello. Let them try to join again. Yes, I'm not getting their request. They come, not getting any request here.
wouldn't have been Fifty eight. Fifty zero. One has come just now. Done. Okay, let's start. Okay, I think uh, I better uh, do like this only. Mm, I'm not able to show my cursor. Okay, so the enteric nervous system, it contains as many neurons as the entire spinal cord. Okay, and, uh, and it is sometimes called as mini brain because uh, if someone asks why it is called a mini brain, because it is having the all the elements of the nervous system. The, all the elements of the nervous system means the sensory neurons, the interneurons, and motor neurons. Okay, so it can function just like the brain functions. So the enteric nervous system is sometimes referred to as a mini brain. The the idea behind is that the entering nervous system has sensory neurons, uh, interneurons, and motor neurons. Okay, the sensory neurons they respond to mechanical, thermal, osmotic, and chemical stimuli. That means, say, um, how uh, any movement is there or uh, any change in the temperature is there or any in the, uh, change in the osmolarity is there or any chemicals present. Suppose some toxins are present in the intestine, then the motility will increase so that the body removes those toxin substances. So that happens when uh, we have some food poisoning and all. So some toxins are produced by some bacteria or from the um, spoiled uh, food substances or the um, say the um, uh, infectious agents have entered our body or some other uh, poisonous substances are being consumed by some individuals then what will happen the enteric nervous system the the sensors the sensory neurons they will sense the change okay in its environment and it is going to give a signal to the brain, okay, that to increase the motility so that those substances are removed from the body. Okay, so those changes are going to be sensed by the sensory neurons. And the motor neurons will control the motility, the secretion and absorption. Say, <coughs> certain food substances, say proteinous food substances are present in the intestine, then the protein digesting enzymes need to be secreted. Okay, from the pancreas, these protein digesting enzymes has to come and act on the proteinous substances. So in that case, the signal has to go for secretion of the proteinous protein digesting enzymes. Okay, so that way it is going to increase in the secretion. Same like that, some fat substances are present in the intestine, then fat digesting enzymes are on demand, and then the signal will go that yes, there is demand of fat digesting enzymes. Okay, and apart not only that, the motor neurons, the motor neurons, they will also be associated with absorption. Say, so what is, what is the main role of the intestine? The main role of the intestine is that the digestive that um, 
the intestines main role is one is in digestion another is in the secretion and another is in the um, excretion okay so the intestinal walls they need to secrete certain substances and act onto the food substances they digest them after the digestion what it has to do it has to help in the absorption okay so otherwise uh, if those digested nutrients okay the nutrients which have been obtained from the digested food materials if they are not being reabsorb okay they are not absorbed across the walls of the intestinal um okay uh, across the intestinal walls then they will go waste they will go in the west they will be excreted as the feces isn't it so the next role of the intestine is to help in the absorption so for absorption these motor neurons they will help in the all process of the absorption okay then the other uh, the what are those interneurons will do the interneurons they will integrate the information from the sensory neurons and feed back to the enter enteric motor neurons so these interneurons they will be present just in the spinal cord there are presence of the sensory neuron entering into the spinal cord through the dorsal holes of the vertebra then the uh integrating with uh the interneurons and coming out again through the vertebral columns of the uh, what uh, onto the um, uh, ventral horns of the vertebra okay as a motor neurons so like that in the enteric nervous system also the sensory neurons will give the signal the motor the interneurons will integrate and give a message to the motor neurons and the motor neurons will bring about the motor activities okay so and in addition to this sensory or interneuron or the motor neurons the parasympathetic nervous system and the uh, sorry pns stands here as a um, peripheral okay not the parasympathetic peripheral nervous system and the autonomic nervous system they serve to connect the cns to the ens or directly to the digestive tract that means the peripheral nervous system the autonomic nervous system the central nervous system and the enteric nervous system they all work together okay so in connection to one another so although the enteric nervous system can function autonomously autonomously independently without a role of any one else the normal digestive function often requires communication between the central nervous system and the enteric nervous system that means there has to be some integration in the information okay or in the function between the central nervous system and the enteric nervous system so this is all about the enteric nervous system so do you want to ask anything on it anything on the enteric nervous system and how it is work as autonomous hello you want to ask anything and how uh, it work as a autonomous here i would like to close the autonomic nervous system autonomous autonomous means singly okay without the role of the other it can work say if we denerve it denerve it means we if practically if we remove all the uh, nervous connections from the central nervous system and allow only the uh, enteric nervous system to work it will function if we remove a portion of the intestine okay if we remove the portion of the intestine and keep it in vitro it is going to function because all the nerves are present in the tissue culture say if we if, uh, sorry in the in the organ bud do you know any or uh, anything about organ bud so organ bud is um, some uh, chamber in which we will put the 
the body fluids which are required for body functioning and then the a portion of the intestine is collected and we keep it in the organ but now this organ under this in this organ but organ but is something is some small chamber okay okay in that we will put the body fluids and then we put the intestine portion of the intestine now this intestine will function in the absence of the brain or the in the absence of the spinal cord okay for some time that means it can work itself also that is the proof okay now you understand the meaning of autonomous so without the role of the central nervous system also the enteric nervous system it can function to control the activity in the enteric nervous system but to act it normally okay to act it normally for a normal living organism it needs its communication was singing Hello, who was asking the question just now? Yes, ma'am. It's clear now. Ramesh, who? Ma'am Nishan, it's okay, ma'am. Nishan, now do you get the answer? Have yes, you got the answer? Yes, ma'am. Okay, that means autonomously means without the control by the central nervous system means without the. involvement of the brain or the spinal cord it can also function that is called autonomously functioning but to have the normal activities it needs its um, association means connection with the brain and the no, uh, this spinal cord okay that is in the central nervous system okay now then i can i shift to the next topic So here I end the autonomic nervous system. So in the autonomic nervous system, we have discussed about the sympathetic nervous system, parasympathetic nervous system, and enteric nervous system. Okay, differences between the parasympathetic and the sympathetic nervous system. What what functions are controlled by sympathetic nervous system? What functions are controlled by Parasympathetic nervous system. Okay, we have discussed all this. Then today we have discussed the enteric nervous system. What is this enteric nervous system? Where it is located? What are those plexuses? Names of the plexuses, and uh, who is responsible for what? Okay, and why the enteric nervous system is also called a mini brain. Okay, so this we have discussed today. So now we will we will discuss about the central nervous system. Okay, we'll go to next topic that is the cell, the central nervous system. So, <clears throat> so then if we think of the nervous system um, before uh, before I go to the central nervous system directly, let's. discuss little bit about the cells of the nervous system whether it is the central nervous system or it is a peripheral nervous system okay so let's talk about the cells of the nervous system this you might be already knowing so who are the cells of the nervous system are these cells the same in morphology or in other cells of the body are these the same like other cells of the body structure wise okay let me tell you that the nervous system is having two types of cells okay One group of the cells they are called neuron and another group of the cells they are called the glial 
this. But player cells, anyone knows who are these glial cells? Have you heard about glial cells? I'm supporting cells. Ma'am, uh, glial cells are the supporting cells, like uh, uh, like uh, as astrocytes, oligodendrocytes. Hmm. Hmm. Yes. So these are the supporting cells. Okay. Uh, means uh, these will be either giving the nourishment or they may be protecting the neurons from certain infectious agents, or they may be. Uh, giving um, uh, like uh, support so uh, it support or it may be protective protection of the any damage okay of these neurons or a certain infections onto these neurons okay so these are the supporting cells so the all of place by two types of cells one is a group one group is a neuron and another is a glial cell okay so neurons and glial cells they, they are going to work together and bring about all the complex activities in the nervous system okay so just let's go through about uh, some uh, Uh, like uh, knowledge on the neurons these you all know you have studied from quite uh, lower other classes isn't it what are these neurons you know about the neurons right you might not be knowing in detail about these glasses but you must be knowing about the neurons so i'll just go through these lines okay just to uh, recollect your knowledge is it okay Yes, you know or not about the neurons? What are the parts of the neurons? Yes. Do you know or you don't know? We know, ma'am. What are the parts of the neuron? What are the parts of the neuron? Normal, one normal neuron. In general. Dental body. Dentide, axon body. Cell body and dendrite, uh, axon, cell body. Uh, what about the axon? Who are the dendrites? What they do? Uh, receiving signals. What these dendrites do? Receiving signals. They receive the signals and the axons. Axons. What about the axons? They pass away the information to other other nerve cells. Okay, so the dendrites receive the uh, in information from other nerves, and axons transmit the information to other neurons. Okay, so let's just go through these few lines, uh, just to recollect. Okay, your knowledge about the neuron. Okay. Uh, if it's required, I will explain. Okay, so let's just go through. Uh, users read along me. Okay, so unlike other cells of the body, a neuron has dendrites and an axon. Okay, so you agree with this? Dendrites arise from the cell body. Dendrites provide sites for receiving information from other neurons. Okay, other neurons will be uh, be having the uh, the exon terminals. They will put on those, those exon terminals. They will come into science with the, some portions located on the dendrites of this receiving neuron. Okay, so the information through the those sites present on the dendrites. Okay, so dendrites provide the sites for receiving information from other neurons. The neurons conduct electrical impulses received from other nerve cells to these cells. 
cell body here, uh, they made these dendrites, okay, better I write dendrites here. The dendrites, they also conduct the electrical impulses received from other nerve cells to the cell body. Now, the, the nerve, the impulses, those electrical messages, they have now reached to the cell body. Okay, so since those dendrites are bringing the messages, they are bringing the electrical stimulus to the cell body, they are known as processes, means bringing in, different means bringing to the center brain, okay, whoever consider as a center and who's anything coming to this the efferent okay and which is away from the center that is the efferent okay so dendrites are efferent prone varies dendrites branch frequently and smaller branches may have spines on them that increases their surface area that means uh, a dendrite will be having multiple projections on them they are called spines so the, again this spines will be having the sites for binding or receiving the signal from other exon terminals okay so simply the spines will increase their surface area as many as hundred thousand neurons can communicate with a single nerve cell that means the spines, okay, all those spines will maybe or it, they can uh, receive multiple number of exon terminals from multiple number of neurons, okay. Then most neurons have a single exon that emerges from the cell body at the exon hillock. So what is this exon hillock? Exon hillock is the reason where from the exon emerges from the cell body okay the exon is the measure root by which the sends signals to other neurons action potentials are initiated in neurons at the initial segment which is adjacent to the exon hillock means thus adjacent to the means just next to the exon hillock, there, there will be initiation of the action potentials. Those action potentials will be passed on to the exon, okay, at the exon hillock and that exon synapse to other neuron, okay, at the spines of the dendrites of other neurons at the time of synapse. Then exon Sense may give rise to collateral branches along their length. Some exons, okay, some exons may also have collateral branches. At the distal end of exon are specializations called terminal or synaptic buttons. The specializations means these are some what enlarged button-like structures, okay. And along the length of the some types of exons, there may also be synaptic specializations called n percent buttons. Some exons, what they do, they have at the terminal end, and some they may have along the length of the exon. Okay, along the length of the exons, if they have some uh, synaptic specializations, they are called n percent. And they are present on the terminal end or they are the uh, terminal buttons or they are the synaptic buttons. Okay, the synaptic buttons are the swellings that the neurotransmitter field vesicles because I coming synapse. So the meaning of this
Hello. Am I not audible? Sir Miss Tha Barman. Yes, sir, ma'am. Huh? Yes, ma'am. Present. Do you know what is synapse? All silent voices not. What is synapse? Ma'am, your voice is not clear. Uh, there was a loss in the connection uh, because of that. It is again connected. Can you hear now? Yes, ma'am. So tell me, what is synapse? Ma'am, synapse is a gap present between the two neurons. No, it is not the gap. It is uh, some kind of junction. Okay. It's some kind of the junction between two neurons. It is not the gap. When they synapse, they don't just touch each other. Okay. It is not just, there is no just direct contact. There is some gap. That gap is called the synaptic clap. Okay. But synapse means it is the point of the junction between two neurons. Here, I have used one word here. Uh, synaptic buttons are swellings that contain neurotransmitter filled vesicles and form chemical synapses. So my question here is, what is this chemical synapse? Do you have any idea? Have you heard this term? Chemical synapse, have you heard this term? Yes, ma'am. What is this? Chemical synapse. When the uh, synaptic plate contains chemical and uh, chemicals. And an electric. Ma'am, neurotransmitters is released. Hmm. That synapse, which is going to release, okay? And after that synapse, there has to be release of certain chemical substance. And those certain chemical substances we call neurotransmitters, okay? So that kind of synapse is the chemical synapse. So synapse can be of two types. One is electrical synapse and another is chemical synapse. So in the electrical synapse, there will be involvement of the release of any neurotransmitter. There will be no chemical release, but instead there will be changes. Okay, there will be changes in the voltage. Okay, there will be changes. There will be opening of certain uh, ion channels in the post synaptic membrane. Okay, after the synapse happened, there will be certain changes in the membrane potential of the post synaptic neuron. Okay, that kind of the synapse is the electrical synapse and the synapse which involves the release of neurotransmitters, release of certain chemical substance is the chemical synapse. So here, what happens when these synaptic buttons or the swellings, okay, so they come Okay, those synaptic buttons or those synaptic swellings, they contain the vesicles. This vesicles means the fluid-filled cavities, okay? The fluid-filled cavities, these vesicles, these are filled with neurotransmitters. So when these synaptic buttons come in contact, okay, they are come in the close contact with the 
those uh, receptors, okay, those sites present at the spines of the dendrites, the specific sites at the spines of the dendrites, there will be release of these neurotransmitters. The vesicles will burst and the vesicles will release the neurotransmitters from those synaptic buttons. So those neurotransmitters will now find their binding sites. Their binding sites will be on post-synaptic neuron. Post-synaptic neuron means after the synapse, the neuron, okay, the receiving, the neuron which is going to receive these neurotransmitters, that is the post-synaptic neuron. The neuron which is bringing the information and having the synapse, that is the presynaptic neuron. Do you understand here what is the meaning of presynaptic neuron and the postsynaptic neuron? Do you understand? Yes. Yes. So the presynaptic neuron will be having its synaptic buttons at the terminal ends of the axons, and they will be having the neurotransmitters. Those neurotransmitters will be filled in the vesicles, and when this the Synaptic buttons comes in close contact with the sites, the, the sites, the specific sites on the uh, then uh, spines of the dendrites. There will be bursting of these vesicles. Okay, those vesicles containing the neurotransmitters, they will burst. They will open. When they open, the neurotransmitters will come out of the presynaptic neuron and terminal. Then they will, these neurotransmitters will find their bindings. Some will remain in the synaptic cleft. The synaptic cleft is the space which is present in between the presynaptic neuron and the postsynaptic neuron. The neurotransmitters will be present here near around the synaptic cleft and some will find their binding sites. Those binding sites will be present on the postsynaptic neuron. Now, after binding the neurotransmitter to its binding sites, the postsynaptic neuron will respond. It will decide now what I'm supposed to do, whether I'm being told to stop my function or I'm being told to do further my functions. Means that information may be either stimulatory or inhibitory. Stimulatory means if it is a neurotransmitter which is going to stimulate the function of the postsynaptic neuron, then it is going to excite, it is going to further transmission of the impulses by exciting the postsynaptic neuron. If the signal, if the neurotransmitter is an inhibitory, okay, then it will inhibit the function of the postsynaptic neuron. Okay? Is it okay up to this? Do you understand? Okay. Uh, so what are the role of Ma'am, you are not audible. These neurotransmitters will either Ma'am, your voice is breaking. Continue. Hello? Uh, maybe because of the um, internet, okay? Uh, since I'm using my mobile internet, we don't have internet facility in the college. I'm using my mobile internet and connecting as a hotspot. So time to time, it goes off, okay? Uh, it's um, For today, I will not go much into details. Uh, you know about the structure of the neuron. So just go through it, okay? Just read about it. We will discuss about the glasses in the next class. Okay, neurons, I think you can study yourself, right? Is my voice audible now? Yes, ma'am. Okay. You, yes, ma'am. You... you uh, you go through about the neuron, the parts of the neuron, the function of each parts of the neuron. Okay, just like I told you about the exact terminals, 
what they do okay what they do just now i told you so like that you just go through because these are all you have all studied in detail okay about the parts of the neuron and their functions okay we'll not waste time here uh, i'll go to the functions and the structure of the glasses in the next class okay let's end here for today thank you ma'am okay you can refer you. to any book you can from google anywhere okay just to have uh, a knowledge what are the functions of